Hi everyone, this is Maverick Paul, the Chemistry Guru. Now in this video, we want to discuss the suggested solution for 2021 A-Levels H2 Chemistry, Paper 1, Question 19. Now Question 19, an unknown organic compound is tested with warm silver nitrate solution. No visible result is seen after one hour. Two students see the experiment and each make a comment. So student P says that this compound is definitely a uh, halogenol arene, but it is not possible to state which halogen is present. Student Q says that this compound is definitely not a halogenol alkane. So basically, we want to determine which students are correct, and we will run through options A, B, C, D from there. Now, you notice when we consider this test, warm silver nitrate solution, we know that this is related to test for halogenol alkane. So topic tested in this question is under halogenol alkane. And maybe let us recap the test for halogenol alkane. And involving test for halogenol alkane, but right what we should do is first thing we need to use NaOH aqueous reflux to substitute out the halogen because by right the carbon halogen bond, the CX bond, is relatively stable. So we actually need a substitution reaction to kick out the halide. So usually what we will use is we will use NaOH aqueous reflux. OH- will come in, kick out your X-. minus. Basically, the product is forming an alcohol and you kick out the halide. And this halide is in aqueous medium and this free halide will then be precipitated. So the second step will be I add dilute HNO3 to acidify the solution, followed by HNO3 aqueous and the precipitation will take place, correct? Because now I have my Ag plus aqueous, X- minus aqueous, the free halide, is present in the aqueous medium, then I will be able to precipitate our silver halide. And based on the color of the PPT, I'll be able to decide whether this is a chloro compound, a bromo compound, or an aldo compound. So by right, this is the proper way for us to consider the test for halogenol LK. Now let's take a look at the conditions that we have for this exercise. And you notice for this question, what we are using is only warm silver nitrate. And if I'm using warm silver nitrate, maybe the condition is not drastic enough for me to have a substitution of my CX bond. And it is possible that I can have a halogenol alkane, but because of just using warm silver nitrate, the halogenol alkane CX bond is not broken, and therefore there's no free halide release for precipitation. Now that is possible because I'm only using warm silver nitrate, so maybe the condition is not drastic enough. That's one possibility. Then I know that there's no visible result, means that there is no presence of your free halide, and therefore there's no precipitate that is being formed. Now, what might explain this lack of observation? So what is possible in terms of explaining this outcome is, first thing we've mentioned earlier, maybe my halogenic alkane is present, but because there's no prior substitution, for me to kick out your free halide, then I will not have any observation even though halogenic alkane is present. That's one possibility. Now the other possibility is the more straightforward one. There's no halogenic alkane present. This is of course a lot more straightforward. And based on these two possible deductions, let us take a look at the comments by student P and see whether this is reasonable or not. Now student P says that this compound is definitely a halogenol arene, but it's not possible for me to state which halogen this is present. Now, involving halogenol arene, the most common one that we encounter, of course, will be halogenol benzene. I know that if you have a halogen attached to benzene, the CX bond is stabilized by resonance, and we're not able to break this bond. Involving nucleophilic substitution, this bond doesn't undergo substitution. I cannot kick out a free halide, and there's no precipitation possible. And so if I'm using halogenol benzene, I will not get any observation. Now, if it is a halogenol benzene, then it is true that there will not be any observation. But is it the only possible explanation? That means, uh, must this compound be definitely a halogenol arene? You notice actually that's not true. But right, any organic compound, as long as there's no halogen involved, will also not give me any observation if you're using silver nitrate test. I can have an SA functional group, I can have an alcohol functional group, I can have a carbonyl compound, I can have an alkene present, basically any functional group that doesn't contain your halogen will give me the same observation. I will not have any visible result 
when you add silver nitrate and we will not get any precipitate. So this means that actually student P, what he says is not true. It is possible that the compound is a halogenol arene, but if you say that it is definitely a halogenol arene and not other possible function groups, then clearly this is wrong. So this is not correct, involving what student P says is not true. Now how about student Q? Now student Q says that, okay, this compound is definitely not a halogenol alkene. Now again, it goes back to involving the first step required, my nucleophilic substitution using NaOH equals reflux. But right, we do need that substitution reaction to kick out a free halide so that I can precipitate the free halide when I add Ag plus in the second step. So there is this possibility that the compound can be a halogenal alkane. It's just that because there's no prior substitution, so therefore the free halide is not being kicked out, then I cannot get any PPT. Might be because of that. That means the way we do the precipitation test using your warm silver nitrate is not sufficient for me to precipitate out my X minus. That's also possible. So this means that what student Q mentioned is also not correct. So basically both of them are wrong. And therefore, when we run through the options, A, B, C, D, of course, uh, the option will be option D, where student P and student Q both are not correct. All right, so that was the discussion involving this question. So if you have learned something useful from this video, please give me the thumbs up, like this video, and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more weekly video lessons. That's all for now. I'll see you next week.